Hey, you remember in January when you fabricated this car, put it together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nine months later, we'll be chopping it up again. This right here is what hit, happens when you hit the corner of a house foundation with your rally car. We uh, we had this lower radiator support we added out of inch and a half by quarter inch tube steel or square stock to beef up the lower radiator support. And we hit right here and it actually ripped off the bottom of the frame where we welded to it and crumpled in the front corner of the frame a little bit. But we're still going to send it. Okay guys, what you just saw in the clip was us going full send in the last eight mile of the third lap of the Eastern Tennessee Rail Sprint. Uh, we went full send, shot a little wide, about two feet wide on the wet grass. Uh, nothing crazy, but what we didn't know was there was a humongous foundation, pylon, whatever you'd call it, uh, in the ground. It was about three feet tall, brick and mortar, covered by grass, and we hit it. Um, I don't know, 20, 25 miles an hour, as you saw in the clip, and it, uh, in the clip, and it just set us straight up in the air, about a 45 degree angle, and the rest is history. Uh, we didn't die, nobody got hurt, the car didn't catch on fire, uh, it almost did. Blake was watching the temperature, uh, fortunately we didn't get any audio because the cameras died, it was so hot that the GoPro started overheating, but the, uh, Temperature was starting to rise, the radiator had a huge hole in it, but we wanted to finish the race because we were in the lead, and for points we wanted to win the series. Uh, we did finish, and we did win, but the last lap the temperature was definitely starting to climb to the uncomfortable zone. And as you can see, we have uh, a damage report for you guys today, where we're going to kind of take the bumper off and go through what has happened to the car. Uh, we haven't touched it since the race. We drove it on the trailer, let it cool down, we parked it. We haven't touched it, so we're gonna go through the damage report with you guys now. So we took the bumper off, kind of did an overall inspection, got the car jacked up. Um, off camera, I disconnected the fan plug wires and everything. They were all mangled, and it was gonna be boring so we're gonna pull the radiator out now and look at the damage this was already a replacement radiator so we're on to number three as you can see here it's tweaked pretty good poor thing didn't stand a chance <laughs> okay so what we're looking at here is the body metal that's double thick here is now gone. This is all empty on both sides. Completely gone, it's stuck on the skid plate which you guys just saw a second ago. And Blake was explaining how this happened. And uh, we had welded this in and put a one and a quarter or one and a half inch bar all the way across. That bar is also gone. Now what you can see is it has ripped the bottom of the uh, front subframe up here out. It's not really a subframe, but you know what I'm saying? And it has shoved that one back. So if you come over here and you look at where this line is compared to that one, it's probably two inches back. The whole bar is caved in now. This up here on that one is way back. Frame's gone. Luckily, as I said earlier in the clip, nothing touched the motor. We just confirmed that. We had a finger gap over here on the uh, timing belt cover, which is really good because that's really close as you can see there and Actually didn't even cut the water pump hose or the radiator hose when it got bent up. It just bent our homemade Thing up and now there's no integrity to it. It's all twisted up uh, If we come down below You can see that the Tow hook in that side is where it's supposed to be, and this one is now shoved and bent out of the way up there. 
And this whole section is missing now. So this is all on the skid plate. And right there, where those bolts are twisted here, is a cross member plate uh, that holds the power steering rack up and the skid plate bolts to it. That has now been removed forcefully and on the skid plate itself. So not sure what we're really gonna do there. We might need to put a new subframe in. Even the sway bar mounts are all jacked up now. Um, good news is looking at the DMS from here, they still look intact. The control arms look like they took a little impact right there, but it was driving fine, so they may not be bent. We're gonna have to pull all this off and inspect it, but we did notice that when it crumbled the skid plate, it actually shoved it up under the car, and then it crushed my driver uh, footwell, which we'll show you now. The lighting might be bad, but you can see, first I noticed the crease by the gas pedal, uh, right where that patch we filled in is now creased up, and now if you look under the seat, the whole seat has been lifted up and over, and the well is raised. I may be able to get in there, looking under the seat, but it's crushed it up all the way to the seat. If you look on the passenger side, it's supposed to be down low and flat. All right, what what'd you discover? Here, let me pass me the camera, I'll show you. In our uh, further research, this is uh, behind the scenes, I didn't realize this, but we poked a hole in the floor of the car itself. You can see right there, that is about a fist size hole right where my harnesses mount. So the skid plate came barreling up under the car and then crushed this wheel well in right here where the pinch weld is and ripped this nice little hole right here. So, yep, to be continued. Okay guys, that's it for this week's damage report. Uh, it's looking a little worse than we thought, so we will be back next episode when we get a whole bunch of new parts.